Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. With the temperatures starting to drop, now is a good time to stay indoors and maybe visit a couple of museums. On this episode, I'll be talking about the museums and exhibits being held at this time. Plus, I'll be giving a history of the Berkshire Museum. First, it's time for this episode's trivia question. This episode's question is, what is the famed dinosaur located outside of the Berkshire Museum named? Now, for this episode's local headlines. The United Methodist Church in Lenox is hosting a holiday craft connection. At this craft show, there will be a cafe hosting many different holiday foods, homemade pies, cookies, a silent auction, and many different local craft vendors. With most COVID restrictions out of the way, now is an excellent time to go. This will be held on Saturday, November 19th. Hours are 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. If you would like to set up a booth, you can email the link shown here or call 413-212-2670. The United Methodist Church is located at 6 Holmes Road in Lenox. Sticking in Lenox for our next story, the second Nightwood will be returning to Lenox at the Edith Wharton Mount. Nightwood is an outdoor sound and light experience that is set against the backdrop of the Edith Wharton Mount. According to its website, it is, quote, an ethereal winter landscape that immerses visitors in sound, light, and color. Inspired by the Mount's unique architecture, landscape, and history, Nightwood utilizes original music, lighting, and sculptural elements to create different experiences of space and place throughout the property, end quote. The total route is approximately three quarters of a mile through the woods and gardens and includes both paved and unpaved pathways, inclines, and stairs. Nightwood takes place from now until December 31st. It will be closed on Thanksgiving Christmas Eve, and Christmas Day. Masks and proof of vaccinations are required. Please call 413-551-5100 or visit edithwharton.org for more information. Great Barrington will be hosting a chamber concert. This will highlight close encounters with music and their performance of a Beethoven piece. This piece is called the Ghost Drio, a virtual sympathy for three musicians and is expansive and noble, like the Austrian arts duke who was the dedicate. The great arts duke is more than a trio. It offered Beethoven the perfect vehicle for the development 
of his compositional techniques and the exploration of instrumental brilliance and virtuosity with three independent powerful voices. In the Ghost Trio, conjuring up images from Shakespeare's Macbeth, Beethoven plays with strangeness and eeriness. Both works are his, among his most Olympian and are in the best possible hands. Pianist Leva Jabugufde has been described as, quote, an artist of commanding technique, refined temperament, and persuasive insight, end quote, by the New York Times. Violinist He John Kim won first prize at the Yehudi Menuhin International Violin Competition at the age of 19 and has been guest soloist with major orchestras in the U.S., Europe, and Asia since. They join internationally acclaimed music director Yehuda Hanani in compositions of tremendous scope, drama, and wit. This concert will be taking place December 11th from 4 to 6 p.m. Visit the website shown here for more information. The Colonial Theater in Pittsfield will be hosting two winter shows. This is another great escape from the cold winter. The first of these concerts is the Wizards of Winter. They will bring their musical intensity, stage theatrics, and holiday fun to the Colonial Theater with the rock opera. Featuring former members of the Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Def Leppard, Rainbow, Alice Cooper, Blue Oyster Cult, and Broadway and theater veterans. This 11-member ensemble boasts soaring vocal harmonies, precision string instruments, powerful percussion, and stunning keyboard work, layered around a rich storyboard that evokes memories and emotions of past holidays. This concert will be taking place on December 3rd at 7 p.m. Masks are required and tickets are very limited. Visit berkshiretheatergroup.org to purchase your tickets. The other concert going on is the Do Wop Project Holiday Show led by actor and singer Charles Brown. After they honed their style on Broadway, the Do Wop Project dresses up 21st century hits in five-part harmonies and return Do Wop favorites to stages across the country. This show features stars from Broadway hits such as Jersey Boys, Motown, and A Bronx Tale. Charo Brown, one of the group's members, will be returning to this stage after the summer's hit show, Smokey and Me, a celebration of Smokey Robinson, was a huge, was performed at Berkshire Theatre Group. This is a perfect way to ring in the holidays in the Berkshires. This concert will be going on Sunday, December 11th at 2 p.m. As with the other concert, masks and proof of vaccinations are required. Again, visit berkshiretheatergroup.org to purchase your tickets.
There is a new exhibit opening at the Norman Rockwell Museum in Stockbridge called Eloise and More, The Life and Art of Hillary Knight. Mr. Knight has been creating art for many years. He was influenced by his parents, who were also artists. His drawings were first featured in 1952. Two years later, he was introduced to actress and singer Kay Thompson. The two collaborated on four books featuring Eloise, the six-year-old girl who lives in the Plaza Hotel. These stories have been very popular among children. And the Norman Rockwell exhibition will feature original art, manuscripts, sketches, photographs, and more. It also explores the lives of both Kay Thompson and Hillary Knight, and the life that Eloise took on after publication. The exhibit recently opened and is on display until March of 2023. Visit the website shown here to purchase your tickets. After you visit the museum, why not be transported to the past this Christmas? The town of Stockbridge will be hosting its 33rd annual Main Street Festival. Sponsored by the Stockbridge Chamber of Commerce, the holiday celebration offers a full range of holiday activities for the entire family to enjoy. Historic property tours, holiday markets, winter lights, unique shops, restaurants, and Santa will show off the famed New England town. Capping off the weekend on Sunday, the town reenacts the spirit of Norman Rockwell's famous holiday scenes, Stockbridge Main Street at Christmas, complete with vintage automobiles parked in the spots occupied in the painting. The day's activities are sure to delight the child and everyone. The festival takes place three days in December, the 2nd through the 4th. There are different events on each day. On Friday, December 2nd, the Olga Dunn Dance Company will perform the Nutcracker Seedling at the Stockbridge Library. There will be a display of nutcrackers there. On December 3rd, there will be a wide variety of events, including a historic holiday property tour, a holiday mark maker's market, hot beverage pop-up at the front porch of the Red Lion Inn, a concert featuring the Berkshire Bach players at 7 p.m., and Winter Lights at Nomkyog, which was mentioned on the previous episode of WWHEN. The Stockbridge Main Street Festival concludes on December 4th with the Stockbridge Main Street at Christmas Recreation. Here, visitors will find themselves transported to the 50s similar to a Norman Rockwell painting. Victorian carolers and the Monument Mountain Regional High School Chorus will be singing holiday music. Children can have their faces painted and there will be a visit from Santa Claus. Mask requirements depend on the activity, whether it's indoors or outdoors. Visit stockbridgechamber.org for more information. Children 12 and under can get into all events for free.
Our next museum is the Bernay Fine Art Museum in Great Barrington, which is opening an exhibit. First, a brief history of the Bernay Fine Art Museum. Bernay Fine Art represents distinguished artists working in a variety of media, including painting, sculpture, photography, ceramics, and works of paper. Founded in Chicago in 2008, the gallery opened in the Berkshires in March of 2019. Recently, the gallery has moved to a new space in downtown Great Barrington at 296 Main Street on the corner of Main and Railroad Streets. As for the new exhibit, it is titled Material World. This exhibit highlights how different artists use materials not normally found in art to create their work. For instance, Anthony Chase uses different types of plaster and other rock mixes to create his unique work. Noah Post combines plaster with other mediums such as paint, ink, and graphite to create large, complex paintings. Shira Torin combines plaster and acrylic paint onto linen and panel. Other artists that will be highlighted include Gregory McAvoy, Hideo Okamura, and Nancy Simmons. All of these artists use different techniques in their artwork, and this exhibit highlights that. Material World opened in late October. It will be on display from now until December 4th. Visit www.bernayfineart.com to purchase your tickets. It's now time for a trip to the Berkshire Museum. We'll be starting with a brief history of the museum. In 1903, Dalton, Massachusetts papermaker and businessman Zenas Crane wanted to blend attributes of three of the most famous museums in America the Museum of Natural History, the Smithsonian, and the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Crane was invested into the Berkshire community and decided that Pittsfield would be the best possible place to kickstart the museum. He actively sought out art and artifacts for the original museum and encouraged others to bring theirs as well. For instance, some of the earliest acquisitions were those from the Hudson River School and paintings from the Albert Bierstadt and Frederick Edwin Schertz. Also, equipment from the first successful trip to the North Pole was donated as Zenas Crane actually helped funded the trip. Now for the exhibits being displayed. One of the exhibits currently on display is the Animals of the World in Miniature. Here, you can travel the world through 14 miniature glimpses into diverse ecosystems around the globe by sculptor Luis Paul Jonas. Visitors of all ages love this exhibit and you'll see why. Another popular exhibit is the Feinbaum Hall of Innovation. From the first electrical transformer 
to the dance of Ted Sean, this contemporary exhibit explores science, technology, culture, and history. Visitors will find inspiration in the stories of all innovators of all ages and walks of life, from the past to the present, as they explore the unique nature and innovation and how the Berkshires has played a role in how we live our lives today. This is a great hands-on exhibit. One of the Berkshires most, Berkshire Museum's most popular attractions is its aquarium, which is located below the museum's lobby level. There are over 35 tanks and the animals range from seahorses and clownfish to boa constrictors and geckos. There are many trained employees to highlight the animals. You can even interact with some of them if you choose. The museum also serves as a host to red-bellied cooters a type of turtle that was in danger of being extinct. However, due to the Berkshire Museum's help, the population has increased from about 300 turtles to over 2,000. Another popular event that goes on every year at this time is the Festival of Trees. Each year, more than a hundred holiday displays are shown throughout the public at the museum. These are donated by local schools, businesses, and organizations. This event has been going on since 1985 and each year has a different theme. However, this year's theme is something different. It will be held as Winter Festival of Trees Reimagined, a solstice celebration. According to Cody Bafuto, the Berkshire Museum's marketing and brand manager, quote, we'll have a full, really large gallery space dedicated to the classic element of the Festival of Trees. There's going to be a makeshift room, moon, and it's going to be under the light of the room. It's going to be the biggest homage to the Festival of Trees, although it's going to be more of a forest experience than Christmas trees. It's going to be an immersive experience, end quote. This will be running from November 12th through January 8th, 2023. The Berkshire Museum is open Mondays through Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Sundays from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. It will be closed on Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day, New Year's Day, and January 3rd. Guests are not required to wear a mask, but it is highly recommended that one does so, especially with the rise in respiratory illnesses. Go to berkshiremuseum.org slash visit to purchase your tickets. Children ages three and under can get in for free. The Berkshire Museum also supplies the answer to this episode's trivia question. As a reminder, this episode's question was, what is the famed dinosaur located outside of the Berkshire Museum named? The answer is Wally the Stegosaurus. Wally the Stegosaurus was first displayed outside the Berkshire Museum in 1997. 
He is 26 feet long, 12 feet tall, 7 feet wide, and weighs 1,200 pounds. The replica was created in the Lewis Paul Jonas Studios, the same studios that helped display the World of Miniatures exhibit discussed earlier in this segment. This dinosaur used to be on display at the Cleveland, Ohio Museum of Natural History for nearly 30 years without a name until it was donated by Carol and Tom McCann in 1997 to the Berkshire Museum. It was named Wally in a Berkshire area contest by local student Levi Bissell. The name was chosen because, at the time, scientific research showed that stegosaurus had the brain size of a wall nut. In 2020, the dinosaur underwent renovations as a result of natural wear and tear. This was actually perfect timing as the museum was closed during the pandemic. So Wally went on a Berkshire County tour to celebrate his remodeling. That ends this episode of Weary Weekly History and Entertainment News. If you would like to watch this or any other WWHEN episode again, you can visit Pittsfield TV's and CTSB TV's websites shown here, or visit NBCTC's Facebook page. Also, if you would like to see the episodes in HD quality, make sure to check out my YouTube page at RT Weary. Thank you.